Pete Best, uh, in some ways, uh, his story was an inspiration for this story. You know, what would that be like? My heart always broke for him. You know, he was the drummer for the Beatles, and, and they replaced him with Ringo Starr just as they were about to become stars. And um, that's the character that Rain Wilson plays. I mean, that's about as tragic as a drummer story as you can get, you know. He, he was in the Beatles, and then he was fired from the Beatles before they became the Beatles. I play the character of Fish, Robert Fishman, a.k.a. Fish. And uh, I am a former heavy metal drummer. And I was kicked out of my band right before they hit it big. Yeah, my name's Pete Best uh, from Liverpool, England. But the character I'm actually playing today is uh, myself. I know Fish's dismissal from the band is something which happens. Okay, it's a show business idiom. It just so happens to be my, <laughs> I suppose you could turn around and say my part in life is that, you know, I play drums for the Beatles, which went on to become the biggest icons in the music industry. The parallel with Fish is he played for Vesuvius through no fault of his own. You know, and the band decision, you know, which was sort of in a way similar to mine behind closed doors. You know, he could have been part or should have been part of the biggest band, you know, Vesuvius. It wasn't meant to be. But the retribution and the su success comes in a different type of format. And I think that's what, that's the key word, you know, the success will come if you persevere. Peter Rice, who's the chairman of the studio, uh, came to me and said, so I heard you know Pete Best. And I said, well, I know his family and I'm friendly with his niece and his... Um, his brother, and I said, he goes, I would love to have him in the film. So I said, let me make a phone call. So I called him up. Pete read the script. He had just left uh, North America. He was landing in Liverpool when I called him. So in the space of about 48 hours, it was read the script. Are you interested? You know, we'd like you to play the cameo. Are you agreeable? And uh, 48 hours after that, I was on the plane. And here I am, you know, enjoying every moment of it. So, yeah. so I'm actually just reading. Top 14, Charlie, take one. Yeah. Marker. He flew in, and we had a little mini scene together, and uh, it was a really extraordinary experience meeting him. He's the sweetest guy in the world, and a great sense of humor, and we had a lot of fun together. Nice, nice. I got to work on that. Did he enjoy the practice? Oh, it's fantastic. Let's yeah. see hands. Let's see hands. There's still. They're still soft and pale and, up, and that's pathetic. That's but I, I think that th that the stick twirling that uh, I learned uh, in preparation for the movie is going to make me look like a better drummer than my actual drumming. You know what I mean? If I can like be playing. Nu, nu, da, um, ba, uh, uh, oh, you've uh, got it off. Yeah. You do other stick tricks. <laughs> Fantastic! I gotta learn that one. That's a good one when you're on stage and you go like that. Ah! <laughs> nice. You like disco? I used to. I Did think, you? Uh, yeah, yeah. I used to disco and dance. Would we better. find you uh, in the in the late seventies, like over in uh, Liverpool in a in a disco? Strutting my stuff. Do, working. Do working my GT. Yeah. Yeah, you could. Yeah. Uh, so, did you know anything about me before this movie or before we met? I knew just a couple of weeks beforehand. Mm-hmm. Right? That you were going you to be playing. honest now. Come on. You were going to be playing. I'm a, a very minor fish. All right. Yeah. Right? I'm a minor, minor celebrity but in my land. I must admit, the name didn't ring a bell. Right? Oh, okay. <laughs> End of interview. <laughs> Jesting aside, is great meeting you. Okay. I feel like you're the father I never had. Okay. Come here. Come in. Are there more questions? Fish is given a second chance, and what he thought was his dream turns out not to be his dream. And uh, that's how he grows up and matures into the man we see at the end of the movie. I think second chances relates to a lot of people. Um, okay. For the sake of the you know the present moment, fishing myself, you know, I mean, you can see draw similar parallels to it, um, you know, and I can feel the empathy for him, I can feel the heartache for him, and I can also feel the humorous side of it. Basically, if you start with a full guy, you start with someone at their at their lowest ebb, then comedy always works when someone's got huge problems at the beginning. Right back to like Buster Keaton and Charlie Chaplin falling over, this guy has had the biggest tumble you could ever have. He basically missed out 
on the greatest opportunity of his life by a hair. And I think people just find misfortune and mishap funny. And then they also find people who've had misfortune rising like phoenixes from the ashes incredibly heartening. So if you, end, you have to put the two together, you get comedy and pathos and a story that you, where you're really rooting for the, the main character. You know, you never want to see somebody have, have their dreams taken away from them. And it's, it, we love these kinds of stories. I mean, all of us wish that someone would give us all a second chance somewhere in our life. There's something that we're regretting, each and every one of us. There's very few of us whose lives have turned out exactly the way we want. We all have kind of the A plan, and then life kind of gets in the way, and you go to the B plan. Or sometimes you go through B, C, D, and you end up with the R plan. So I think this notion of getting another shot at the thing you really dreamed of, I think it's completely relatable, I think it's universally relatable, and I think it resonates. Looking back on it and what I've got at the present moment, what I've achieved, I'm happy, you know. Uh, I'm still alive, you know, still got my health and happiness, sense of humor possibly, you know. Um, but just an aside, uh, when you look at it, I've, you know, got a marriage which is held together for 40 odd years, beautiful wife, two beautiful daughters, four wonderful grandchildren, I spoil, you know, I idolise them, but I spoil them. Um, and a great band which is touring the world. You know, so when I've got all those things working for me, I don't feel I'm doing too bad. You know, I feel that, you know, possibly at the end of the day, I might be the winner.